Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at percentage composition. We're going to first define what percentage composition is, and then afterwards calculate percentage composition for a variety of compounds. So let's take a quick look at our slide deck over here. We can take a look at some compounds such as um, H2O and H2O2 or CO and CO2. So we're comparing these pairs of compounds here. And you'll notice they look very similar to each other. They have uh, basically the same elements that make them up, but what you'll see is that they differ in the amount of atoms of each type of element. So for example, H2O is one O, but H2O2, which is had in peroxide, has two O's. In CO, there's only one O, but in CO2, there's two O's. And the fact that they're different by these, uh, by this number of elements, uh, number of atoms, um, gives them different properties overall. Uh, so for example, CO2, you breathe that out, uh, whereas CO, carbon monoxide, is the toxic um, compound that, that can um, severely harm and kill somebody. Uh, H2O is water, which we drink, and then H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide, which you're not really going to drink. Uh, so simply having that difference leads to different properties overall. Now, before we go into full-scale calculations, uh, one important concept you need to be aware, with, aware of is called the law of definite proportions. And when we look at the law of definite proportions, um, what we're looking at there is essentially the composition of compounds. So here we have two samples of water, one in a water bottle and then one from the tap. And regardless of where that water comes from, water bottle or tap, the molecules are always made up of um, one oxygen and two hydrogens. And it doesn't matter where the sample is from, it's always going to be that same ratio of hydrogens to oxygens, two to one. But we also say that uh, we're always going to have the same percentage by mass. So if you were to take a molecule of uh, water and you were to see what mass of it, what percentage by mass of it is hydrogen and what percentage of mass is oxygen, you'd always get 88% of its mass is roughly oxygen and 12% is hydrogen. This is by mass, it's not by number of atoms. So students look at this and say, well, there's two out of three um, atoms that are hydrogen. So it should be, you know, 66% hydrogen and 33% oxygen. By atoms, yes, but we talk about by mass here. Oxygen weighs more. Oxygen weighs 16 units. Remember on your periodic table, the mass, oxygen is 16 units and each hydrogen is one, about one. So we have about two here and 16 here for a total of 18. So um, it's based on the mass of the atoms found within H2O, not how many atoms there are. So wherever you find water, any sample is going to have 88% oxygen and 12% hydrogen. And that's what the law of definite proportion is. It basically says that the elements in the compound are always present in the same proportion by mass, no matter how large or small the sample. So if we take a look over here, this is benzene. You don't really need to know what it is, but notice we have a 50 gram, 50 gram sample of benzene here. Um, over here, we can see that you have 46 grams of carbon in, in that sample and four grams of hydrogen in that sample. And you can figure out the percentages. Well, you can say, you know, that there's 46 divided by 50 times 100, 92% of, of benzene is carbon. And then the rest, you know, you can just do 100 minus 92 or four divided by 50 times 100, that's 8%. So the percentage by mass is gonna be the same regardless of the sample size. So in a, a 25 gram sample, 92% of that 25 should be carbon. So you would do your 0.92, almost like you're when you're doing uh, marks for a test, 0.92 times 25, you'd have 23 grams is, is uh, carbon. And the other two grams, because it's a total of 25, must be hydrogen. But to figure that out, you would say, well, I remember I had 8% hydrogen. So you do 0.08, because that's 8%, times 25. And you would get two grams hydrogen in this 25 gram sample. So the point is that this follows the law of definite proportions, that the percentages will stay the same, regardless of the sample size that you have. And why do we care about that? Well, if we know that percentages will stay the same, if one day we ever get an unknown compound and we analyze it and we find out, for example, that the unknown compound has 6.478% hydrogen, 42% carbon, 51% oxygen, we can do some fancy calculations and figure out that compound is actually sucrose. So this is a great way to figure out what compound we're dealing with, what substance we're dealing with when we're not sure. We can use different lab tools, get these percentages and figure out what our formula is in the end. So how do we figure out percentage composition? How do we figure out mass percent of compounds? There's a variety of different ways you can do it. Um, but first I wanna talk about what percentage composition is. So if I were to ask you for the percentage composition of a, uh, a compound, what that means is I'm asking you to tell me 
what percentage of each of the element make up in the compound. So if I said, give me the percentage composition of vanillin, you would tell me, okay, well, in vanillin, carbon makes up 63.10% by mass, hydrogen makes up 5.3% by mass, and oxygen makes up 31.6% by mass. Um, and so if you add them all up, that should be 100, assuming that that's all the elements in there, right? The percentages should add up to 100. Uh, and it doesn't matter how large or small the sample of vanillin is or whatever the compound is, um, it's always going to maintain these uh, percentages, right? The law of definite proportion. So we say that the percentage composition is going to be constant for a particular compound. Um, the individual percentages for the individual elements, that's called the mass percent. So for example, the percent composition of vanillin is the mass percent of carbon, the mass percent of hydrogen, and the mass percent of oxygen. So percentage composition basically means tell me the percentages of all the elements. But if I were to focus on just one, then we call that the mass percent. So mass percent of carbon in vanillin is 63.10. Mass percent of hydrogen in vanillin is 5.30%. Mass percent of oxygen in vanillin is 31.60%. So um, generally, when you do an analysis of a compound, you want to find the percentage composition. You do that by finding the mass percent of each element in that compound, and we'll learn lab techniques to figure that out later on. Right now, I just need you to get the concept. So to calculate the percentage composition, there's two main methods. You can do it from mass data or from a chemical formula. And so in our calculations, we're going to take a look how to do that from both perspectives, mass data or chemical formula, depending on what you have. And again, the idea is that if you know the percentage composition, you can use that information to figure out what compound you have. So if you have a mystery substance you're trying to figure out and you figure out its percentage composition, you can use certain techniques and strategies and math to figure out you know, what the formula for that compound actually is. So in our next video, we're going to take a look at how to calculate percentage compositions for a variety of compounds um, from either mass data or from the formula.